after treatment components that have failed. And now this is where the big bucks start. And uh, you thought we were in the big bucks. Let me tell you, we haven't even started yet. What is going on today, guys? My name's Alex. Welcome back to another Wednesday night shop talk. And tonight we're gonna to be talking about the Cummins after treatment system, specifically talking about the cost of after treatment part replacements. And behind me, we have a bunch of sensors and pumps here and we'll go through each and every one and then we'll dive underneath this bus here. We have your 6.7 Cummins here. It's a little dirty, she's an old girl, but it is the 6.7 Cummins or the ISB Cummins and it has the exact after treatment system or very, very close to what would be on a typical modern diesel in your um, Ram 2500s. Now, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, um, as most of you guys know, this is a Ram 2500 power wagon with the 6.4 Hemi. And I am not about to bash the Cummins and the expensive after treatment parts, um, simply because I don't own a Cummins. I think the 6.4 Hemi is better. Um, I think both engines are great. It all depends on the application that you need them for. And if you guys do own a Cummins in a Ram 2500 or 3500, there is nothing wrong with that engine. I'm simply just talking about the facts when owning a modern diesel and let's be honest, very expensive after treatment systems on them. And uh, so that's what we're gonna dive into today. So the reason why I wanna talk about this tonight uh, is because uh, a couple days ago, we got a shipment of two of these knock sensors. Obviously I just have one here and I saw the invoice price and it was a little bit astronomical. So two of these sensors were invoiced for $2,500. So one sensor alone is over $1,000. So these sensors are Knox sensors um, and they are one of many sensors on your active treatment system. And I thought I would just talk about this because it shocked me how expensive these freaking sensors are. This is a Knox inlet sensor here. Um, I'm sure some of you guys have no idea what the hell that is, and uh, that's okay, we'll get into it in a second. But anyways, this is a Knox inlet sensor, and this sensor costs over $1,000. Fortunately, or unfortunately, there is a Knox inlet and a Knox outlet. So there's two Knox sensors, basically identical sensors, um, on these Cummins engines. And now, I know I'm gonna use a school bus, but for those of you who own a Ram 2500, it will basically be the exact same after treatment system. So I know it looks completely different, but it will be basically the exact same. Now, some of you guys are probably wondering why is this sensor so freaking expensive? And well, I really don't have a good reason for you. But there is actually a core on these sensors. Now the core is worth about $300. So um, if, you were able to get both sensors out of the vehicle without damaging them or cutting them, um, they would only be about $1,800 for both of them. So <laughs> still very expensive. And now the reason why I say without cutting them is because the inlet knock sensor is literally right behind the turbo there. It's in a terrible spot. And a lot of the times what happens is it gets seized in there and you end up having to actually cut off the wiring harness here and put a socket on there. And when you do that, the core is voided. Um, so <laughs> if you do that, this sensor is around a thousand dollars, believe it or not. So as we roll under the bus here, um, this is our after treatment system here. So up front you have your DOC and your DPF right here. Um, this is your death dozer unit and this is your SCR. Now the NOx sensors, which what we were talking about, mainly deals with your SCR canister here. Right here is your NOx outlet sensor and uh, that's easy to get to. Not too big of a problem. What is a problem is the fact that we have many, many more sensors on both the DPF, the DOC, and the SCR, all of which cost a lot of money. So we have a temp sensor here, we got a temp inlet sensor for the DPF, temperature outlet sensor, we got a pressure outlet sensor, and a pressure inlet sensor for the DPF. Now, on your SCR canister, we also have a temperature inlet and a temperature outlet sensor as well. 
So like we just saw, we have five temperature sensors on your aqua treatment system. This is a temperature sensor right here. And depending on what temperature sensor you actually need, they are anywhere from like 200 to like $600 each. Um, so again, not as expensive as your Knox sensors, but still these things are not freaking cheap. And there's really nothing here. It's just a sensor and some wiring, but still they are very expensive. So what else do we have in this bag of goodies here? Well, we have a pressure sensor here. Now, if you guys remember what I showed you guys, the little tubes, this is a pressure sensor. Again, this sensor is probably worth anywhere from three to four hundred dollars, all depending on your make and model. Um, you know, these after treatment systems, they've been changed many times in the last 10 years. You have your EPA 10, GHD 14, GHD 17, and your GHD 20. Um, and all of those years, there has to be certain emissions protocols met, meaning that manufacturers often change their after treatment systems. So sensors tend to change and you know, it's just sometimes kind of a nightmare. And then my last box here is something a little special. We'll bring her down to the ground here. So this right here is a DEF pump or diesel exhaust fluid pump. Um, this one is has failed. It's a core, it's going back. Um, as you guys can see, DEF was getting into the electrical plug and uh, causing a whole bunch of problems. So it has failed. Um, but this is a DEF pump and this is around $1,500, $1,600 to replace which is no fun. Now, I guess the question is how often or how likely are any of these things to fail? And unfortunately, the answer is kind of likely. Um, for example, your knock sensors here, the expensive ones, we change those things like they're, you know, candy. They come and go pretty quickly. Um, and usually you end up changing them in pairs, not always, but sometimes. Um, so those are a quite frequent um, repair. Def pumps, not as frequent, but you know, I've done a ton over the last year or so. Uh, the temperature sensors, again, these things, we go through a ton of these temp sensors. They fail all the time on these, on these uh, after treatment systems. And then your, your pressure sensors, honestly not actually change that many, uh, but they do fail every now and again. So I guess what I'm trying to say as a whole here is that after treatment systems are very expensive to repair. And we haven't even talked about the fact that all of these sensors will cause just a check engine light. Uh, you have to pay, unless you are a mechanic, you're gonna have to pay someone to diagnose the problem. And sometimes, and quite often, the problem is not that easy to diagnose. Sometimes these things take quite a few hours to figure out um, you know, which sensor has gone bad. Now, worst case scenario, what happens is you go to the shop, they diagnose that it is not actually a sensor that has failed, it is actually the after treatment components that have failed. And now this is where the big bucks start. And uh, you thought we were in the big bucks, let me tell you. We haven't even started yet. All right, let's dive in here and uh, I'll show you the money. So every after treatment system after 2012 has a DOC up front here, DPF filter in the middle, and then you have your SCR canister right here at the end. The DOC fails, that's about $1,500 to replace. Not the worst. DPF filter, that's around $3,000, $3,500 to replace. So. Not the uh, the best phone call you want to get. Um, now, what's actually really, really expensive is this SCR canister right here. That will run you anywhere from six to $7,000 to replace if it goes bad. And trust me guys, they go bad more often than you think. I've replaced a number of SCR canisters alone this year and uh, it's just not, not a good thing. Now, when diagnosing, you know, having a bad SCR, which again, like I just mentioned, is a lot of money to replace. Often what happens is the diagnostic software will tell you to throw some knock sensors at it. So your inlet sensor, your outlet sensor, which again, we established was about 
$2,000 just under with core. Without core, you're looking at $2,500. You'll throw those sensors in, you'll put the vehicle into regen, and then the codes will not go away. You will continue diagnosing, and then eventually you will find that the SCR itself is actually the problem. And once you use NOx sensors, you cannot send them back. They are, they are yours. So oftentimes when you were changing SCR canister, you're probably looking around eight grand, nine grand. Um, and again, if you're not a mechanic, you know, you're gonna be paying for that labor time if it's not under warranty. Now the last component on an after treatment system which does fail and we replace quite often, which I haven't talked about, is the DEF header. Up here, that is your DEF header right there. That you have your DEF temperature sensor and a bunch of other um, DEF sensors up there. And every now and again, those... And those usually run around $1,500-ish. I also think a lot of people like to compare the 6.4 Hemi um, to the 6.7 Cummins in terms of ownership cost. Um, and personally, I just, I just don't like that argument. I think you're, you should buy the engine that suits your lifestyle, but I think it's important to touch on how expensive after treatment repairs are because they get very pricey. Now in a perfect world, what you could do is just simply delete the after treatment system. And there would be no question that your diesel engine, um, would be way more cost effective in terms of ownership in the long run. However, it's just not that simple anymore. The fines are massive. And with the after treatment system on a diesel engine, it makes the debate much more intriguing. And it seems like maybe a gas engine could be potentially more cost effective in the long run, potentially. Now, before we end this video, again, I just wanna state, I have nothing against a 6.7 Cummins. I would actually probably love to own one. However, I have always really liked the power wagons. I just, I, I really think they're really cool trucks and you get the 6.4 Hemi with it. So that's what I got. And the 6.4 Hemi is not without its faults. This thing is a freaking pig on fuel and it costs you a fortune in fuel. And as many of you guys have stated, to get the best bang out of a diesel, you have to own it for a long time. Meaning that you are more than likely to encounter more than one after treatment issue um, or replacement of sensors and componentry because all of the buses in our fleet here, once they reach 10 years old, we scrap them. So all of these buses are 10 years and younger, and yet we are replacing after treatment system componentry left, right, and center. Anyways, guys, that's gonna wrap up the video for tonight. Um, I was just very surprised how much NOx sensors cost these days. And I figured I would make a video talking about after treatment system repairs in general because they are quite pricey. And I think it is a very valid thing to talk about when talking about the cost of ownership um, in comparison to a diesel or a gas engine, which a lot of you guys seem to like to talk about in the comments. So we'll add a little fuel to the fire. And uh, if you guys have anything to say about this, let me know in the comments as always. Love to hear what you guys have to say. But if you guys did like the video, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. And if you like cool stuff like this, don't forget to subscribe. We'd love to have you guys on board. Um, but enough of me. We'll see you in the next freaking video.